Hi hey everyone, thanks for attending this talk. My name is Clement Pitclodel. Back in undergrad, I taught in high school for a few months. There was a proof I liked to show my students because it surprised most of them. This was the setup. Every student knows that you count some fractions element-wise. What many students don't know is that you can actually, as long as you're just trying to prove an inequality. My main line of research is doing proofs with cocks, so let me show a cock proof of this inequality. That's it. You can check that the statement at the top matches what I wanted to prove, and there's a QED at the end, and I promise that cock actually accepts this proof, so all good. Hey, I can even add a little rooster next to the proof to make it more convincing. If this were a live talk, I'd pause and ask people to raise their hands if they feel they understand this proof. But since I'm alone at home talking to my camera instead, I'll just assume that you're like me and that you don't find this pile of tactics particularly enlightening. What are you supposed to do? Simulate cock tactic engine in your mind to understand what's going on? What we're looking at together is not what mathematicians typically call a proof, because it's missing the proof states which Koch calls goals. What we're looking at is a proof script, an LTAC program that rec records the steps that establish the theorem holds. It's made of a sequence of tactics, each of which corresponds to a small amount of progress in the proof, like multiplying both sides of an inequality by a positive number or reasoning by induction. What it does not record are the goals, the intermediate proof states that these steps lead to. That's because if you run the proof script in a Koch development environment, Goals are automatically computed and displayed by Koch itself. The downside is that this makes it nigh impossible to understand a proof script on its own without running it. In many cases, we don't care why a theorem is true, so it does not matter that the proof script is inscrutable. Maybe I'm proving that a particular program does not perform out-of-bound array accesses, for example, and it's enough for me to know that the theorem holds. In those cases, if Koch is happy, then I'm happy too. But sometimes, Proof do carry interesting insight. Maybe there's a particularly tricky case that I'd like readers to think about, or maybe I'm using cock proofs to communicate interesting mathematical ideas, or maybe I'm teaching students about simple math and logic concepts and using the computer to support my explanations and introduce formal reasoning. In those cases, I want to show the reader what steps we took and what states they led to. That's easy to do in cock if the readers have access to cock itself. They can just feed the proof script to cock in an interactive ID and inspect the intermediate states that the IDE displays. But maybe your readers don't have the right version of Cock installed, or maybe your proof has large dependencies that take a while to compile and your readers are just browsing casually. Maybe they're on a mobile phone. Maybe you're writing a book and, well, your readers can't run Cock on a physical book. So what do people do to write manuals, tutorials, textbooks, blog posts, or any other piece of text that mixes Cock proofs with prose? In most cases, they do something like this. They run the proof in Koch, and then by hand, they copy the output of each tactic into source code comments. Here's what it looks like in certified programming with dependent types. Here's what it looks like in Ilya's programs and proofs. Here's what it looks like in software foundations. This is a particularly cumbersome process. It takes a lot of work. It's easy to make mistakes. It's very easy to forget to update the comments after changing a proof script. There's also no way to check whether the comments are still valid, so you have to rely on readers to point issues as they discover them. There's got to be a better way, and that's where Electrion comes in. Electrion is two things. First, it's a compiler that records Cox output and embeds it within the proof script to create interactive proof visualizations. And second, it's a literary programming system for Cox. Here's the same proof as rendered by Electrion. Electrion's compiler took the input Cox file, fed it to Cox, collected the output, formatted it, and generated a web page interleaving inputs and outputs. What you're looking at is an interactive web page. Each input fragment of the original Cox script is a button that you can hover on or click to show or hide the corresponding proof state, along with any accompanying messages. Every time I make changes to the Cox file, I can rerun Electrion, and it will update the visualization. And because all outputs are recorded, browsing through the proof is instantaneous. There's no need to load a copy of Cox in your browser. All of the layout and display is done in CSS, so you can actually change the rendering in all sorts of fancy ways, including one style that mimics an usual interface that you see in a proof assistant with the code on the left and the goals and messages on the right. Also, since we're now in the web browser, we can make everything look extra fancy, thanks to the magic of Cock notations combined with JavaScript rendering of LaTeX code. And now I have a much more reasonable shot at getting you to understand the proofs. First, we sum the two fractions on the right, then we expand the numerator, then we multiply both sides to get rid of the denominators. Then we simplify and cancel both sides. And lastly, we use the fact that a square is always positive. That's really what it is. You take a cock document, you put little annotations to indicate which parts of the output should be displayed by default, 
And then Electrion does the magic of running Cock and embedding its answers into your document. Here's an example of hiding parts of the input to show something slightly different. Part of teaching students about Cock involves explaining the curry hallward correspondence by showing how tactics construct proof terms under the hood. In this example, I've added hidden calls to the Cock command show proof between each line, and Electrion shows the piecemeal construction of a proof term. Okay, so this solves the problem of displaying goals and outputs to readers, but there's just one part of writing a document that includes cock proofs. The other part is writing the explanatory prose that accompanies the proofs. In fact, if you inspect this example from CPDT closely, you'll notice that there's no actual code here. It's all prose and comments. There's lots and lots of prose around the code. In fact, there's a whole book in there written within source code comments. I have a lot of respect for the authors of all these cock books. It takes a whole different level of grit and determination to edit a whole book out of source code comments. And the books that I mentioned are some of the best cock books out there. Again, it shouldn't have to be this way. My text editor has all sorts of nifty features for editing markdown or restructured text documents like smart navigation, spell checking, live previews, and convenient shortcuts. So it's particularly frustrating to have to write all my code inside of cock comments. Electrion has an answer for that as well. It includes a suite of literate programming tools for Cock that make it much easier to create and edit documents that mix prose and proofs. The code you're looking at on the screen is a snippet from a blog post that I wrote recently. When you give Electrion a Cock file, it can compile it to a web page, but it can also generate a restructured text file by partitioning the Cock source into a sequence of code and comment blocks, extracting the comments, and wrapping each code fragment into a restructured text code block. This is what it looks like after flipping the code and the prose around. The syntax is restructured text. Restructured text is a great markup language, very much like Markdown, but with a robust story for writing extensions. In fact, I made this whole presentation in just one large cock file. I used Electrion to convert it to restructured text. The best part is that you can go back and forth like this. Once you're done editing the, pro the prose of your document and you're ready to resume hacking on the proofs, you can use Electrion to convert the restructured text file back into a cock source file in which the prose is wrapped in special comments and the code is at the top level. These two transformations are the inverse of one another, so you can switch between the code-oriented view and the prose-oriented view at will. This is trivial to integrate into an IDE. I did it for Emacs, and I'm sure it would be very easy to do in any other editor. Being able to go back and forth between restructured text and cock means that Electrion does not have to implement its own markup language for literate comments. It can just piggyback on the existing restructured text tool chain, which is very robust and used by a lot of people for all sorts of documents. If you're familiar with literary programming, you might notice that this is a bit different from the usual process. Normally, in systems like web or org mode, you start with a main document, which you either tangle to get executable source code, or weave to get a document suitable for typesetting or reading, like LaTeX or HTML. But in most cases, it's not particularly easy to edit the generated code and mirror these edits back into the original sources. That does not matter too much for regular programming languages, although it does make it trickier to use tools like linters or debuggers. Before a cock proof, you really want to be able to step through the proofs interactively while you're writing them. And that's why most proof heavy cock literature ends up being written in cockdoc with the pros embedded inside comments. So that's precisely what Electrion provides. It gives you bidirectional editing which allows you to toggle between code and prose seamlessly, so you're free to use the most appropriate editing environment at all times. Importantly, there's no preferred view of a document. You can pick either the restructured text view of the code or the cock view as the one you store and distribute. For a literate cock library, you would probably distribute the code-oriented view so that your users can compile your files as regular cock sources without having to know anything about Electrium. And for a book with a few cock examples here and there, you might distribute the restructured text file instead. Now that I've given you a sense of what Electrion does, let me say a bit about how it does it. Electrion is a Python program, and it's written as a collection of mostly independent modules. A core module handles communication with Cox through the Sir API protocol. An interesting technical challenge is sentence segmentation. Cox's notation system makes it almost impossible to determine where a Cox sentence ends or where it starts. So we use Cox APIs directly for this. A transformed module improves the rendering of the results and process display annotations that specify which parts of the output to show or hide by default. This module can accommodate user-specified transform, which make it possible to special case the rendering of certain types of constructs and generally customize the output. As an alternative, you can also customize the output by running JavaScript directly in the browser. 
Here are two concrete examples. In this first one, I'm trying to get a better sense of the internal workings of Cox's red black trees. So I'm progressively adding elements and seeing how the resulting trees look. The default output is not very convincing. Now, here's the same thing, but rendered using a graph library to display the trees which makes it clear how the structure of the trees is affected by the order in which the elements are added. In the second example, I have a hypothetical compiler that takes C code and produces a binary. What I've done here is ask Electrium to take the bytes printed by Koch, call objdump on them to get an assembly code listing, highlight that using pigments, and then inline the result into the output. Finally, an HTML module translates the recorded Koch session to HTML. This is mostly straightforward, though we're doubly careful to produce good code to make sure that the result works without JavaScript and look decent even without CSS. That's because if you write a blog, for example, many people will read it through an RSS feed, and these mostly don't support CSS. A literate module is in charge of tangling and untangling from Cock to restructured text and back. Starting from Cock is just a matter of identifying comments, which we do using a recursive decent parser. It's harder than it looks because the rules governing Cox comments and strings are pretty tricky to get right. So tricky that it trips up the syntax highlighter that I'm using for this presentation. Starting from REST, we use a standard restructured text parser to delimit sections of code and comments, and we jump through a few hoops to make annotation work out. In both directions, we keep track of source code positions. This makes the process quite a bit trickier, but allows us to keep the position that the user is looking at when they switch from one view to the other. This is pretty crucial to ensure a nice experience when toggling between the code and the prose views. As a bonus, it allows us to run the restructured text syntax checker in the background when the user is in the cock view and translate error positions to display them at the right place in the cock view. A document tells in a Sphinx modules plug Electrion into popular restructured text compilation tool chains to allow users to include bits of cock code into large documents and compile them with their favorite tools. The paper has a lot of evaluation, and I encourage you to check it out if you're curious. In brief, the evaluation is organized around two axes. The first experiment is intended to evaluate Electrion's robustness. We've compiled plenty of documents in Cock libraries, totaling tens of thousands of lines of code and thousands of printed pages, and the approach seems pretty robust. We can compile all of Cock's standard library, various blog posts, chapters exerted from various books, and even a complete volume from software foundations. If you're familiar with some of the books that I mentioned, though, you may be wondering how this actually works, because most of them are written in Cockdoc, not in restructured text. And I've said before that Electrion processes restructured text documents, not CogDoc. That's actually a neat example of Electrion's extensibility. What we do for a CogDoc document, instead of asking their author to port them to restructured text, is to render the code in Cox output with Electrion. But we run CogDoc for the prose part, and we incorporate the HTML that it generates into the web pages that we produce. The second axis measures Electrion's speed. All the graphs are in the paper. But the long story short is that Electrion has a median overhead of about 3x on compilation types. 90% of the files fall below 7x. And a good one third of that is communication overhead that probably could be eliminated in the future. The rest is the overhead of collecting and formatting goals, which can be pretty costly for files that have many goals. It's hard to do justice to all the related work in this area in just a few minutes, so I'll simply say that Electrion built on decades of great ideas for making programs and proofs more understandable all the way from a paper in 1980 co-authored by Eric Schmidt and Phil Butler to PhD theses written just a year ago. There's 60 citations, three pages of related work in the paper. If you're curious about the history of this stuff, you really should have a look. To recap, Electrion provides an architecture to record and visualize cock proofs, facilitating sharing and interactive exploration of proof scripts, and a bidirectional translator between woven and tangled documents, enabling seamless editing of prose and code. Electrion is freely available on GitHub, and it's already used in the wild. We use it for our group blog. I know someone is trying to use it for their cog documentation of the company, and there's even third-party packages starting to pop up to integrate it with other blogging platforms. I'm sure someday a council will help me figure out how to put it on OPAM too, or maybe on the Python package in the next. Maybe I can conclude with a few words about the next steps. Here are some directions that I'm exploring or would like help exploring. First, I'd like to make a LaTeX backend. Restructured text can produce LaTeX in addition to HTML, so it would make sense to support that as well. I have a branch for this, and it's almost ready. Second, I'd like to explore advanced visualizations further. There are many domains for which the natural visualization for a piece of data is not text. I have a few examples in the paper, but I'd like to push that idea further. In fact, what would be really neat would be to settle in a standard for cock developments to specify how to render a particular type. 
I'm thinking of display-only notations that would produce images, graphs, plots, etc. Once we have this, we could even integrate it with IDs and finally stop feeling envious of the racket folks with their magic picture tricks. Third, for all the machine learning wizards out there, I'd like to explore automatic proof summarization, just like automatically identifying the most exciting moments of a soccer game before cock proofs. More formally, the task is to automatically identify a small subset of proof steps that lead to particularly interesting or relevant goals. We'd use this in combination with Electrion to identify the most interesting parts of a proof development. Finally, I'd like to extend the system to other languages, both for the markup side and for the cock side. I built Electrion with cock and restructured text, but very little of it is actually cock or restructured text specific. To port Electrion to a different language, like Lean, for example, you would need to add a Python module that invokes Lean and collects its output. And if you also wanted the literate programming support, you'd want to make a bidirectional translator for Lean's common syntax. The literary programming parts were actually inspired by work that I did on FSTAR a few years ago, so adding new languages really shouldn't be too hard. If you're interested in getting Electrion to work with your favorite proof system, please do get in touch. Thanks all for your attention. Feel free to reach out if you have questions, and check the README and the paper for, extra, for lots of extra info.